one of the most important parts of fishing on big waters like Ferry Meadows where we are today is baiting up. Get your baiting up wrong, the whole day can unravel as a result. So first things first, you've got to think about where you're going to fish. Now Ferry's pretty flat, so I found a nice sort of spot, sort of 50, 55 metres is always a good distance. It's flattened out there, it doesn't get any deeper and the bream tend to hold on those ledges. So once you've sorted a distance, the next thing is right kit for the job. Now trying to chuck a big bait up feeder on a normal feeder rod isn't the one. I'm not saying it's impossible because it isn't, but it's just not ideal. You're going to struggle to get the distance if the wind's bad. Emptying the feeder cleanly, because you haven't got the stiffness in the tip of the rod with a feeder rod, it's not going to empty as clean. So you need specialist kit. So rod choice, 12 foot exchange bait up. It's a purpose designed bait up rod. So we've designed it purely with that in mind. It's got a very fast tip speed. And the reason that's important is for getting a clean bait release. So when you're emptying the feeder, Basically, the, the rod's not all bending, so you're not emptying it cleanly. It's very stiff in the tip, very fast action. So when you go in like that, obviously, them quick jerks, with, you can feel the feeder empty nice and clean, so you know the bait's going in exactly where you want it. The other thing the rod's got is loads of power. It's, you're going to be chucking like 20, 30, 40, 50 gram feeders, and then you've got bait on top. So it's got to have the power in the butt to be able to do that, and the 12 foot exchange bait up's got it. Moving on to obviously reel and line. Reel, a mini big pit makes it easier. Obviously it's got more, the bigger reels have got more winding power. Baiting up, even if you're only putting like six, eight, 10 feeders in, it's quite a rigorous, sort of hard process. So you need a reel with a bit of winding power that's gonna enable you to do it that little bit quicker. On the reel, there's nothing better than braid where allowed. And that's why we've designed purpose bait up braid, 30 pound, 016 diameter, and it's bright orange, so it means it's nice and visible, you can see everything, you can see exactly where you're baiting up. But braid is absolutely vital for baiting up. No stretch, again, means that nice clean release of bait. When you're trying to empty that feeder, it needs to empty straight away. You don't want to be dragging it three, four meters across the bottom. So braid with no stretch, when I'm sort of jerking the rod back to empty that feeder, it's gonna empty that little bit cleaner. The other big advantage to braid over mono, let's say, is I can be more accurate. Casting's easier because it's lower diameter. It's 30 pound, so I'm casting straight off the braid. Don't need a leader. When I'm using the bait up setup, it's literally braid direct, and I can bait with that setup, as in rod and reel and line. I can bait anywhere there from 30 meters to 80, 90 meters with the right feeders. So next up is feeder choice. Now there's two types of feeder I use for baiting up. We've got the six and seven hole Guru bait ups, which are the exchange system, and then also the bait up windows in cage and solid. I use them both for sort of different purposes, but starting up with the cage, the bait up exchanges, I use them in six and seven hole. So they're slightly narrow, if you look down, down a feeder, they're slightly narrow at the top and obviously get wider at the bottom, which means when you're trying to empty that feeder, they just empty that little bit cleaner, which means you can be a little bit more accurate. Also, weight of feeder is also important. I'm a big believer in having the feeder slightly too heavy because I can be more accurate and with the 12 foot rod, it's easily capable of chucking that feeder. If you try and chuck too light a bait or feeder, you can lose accuracy in the wind. So I always tend to go 10 gram heavier than what I need it to be. On the subject of accuracy, I've got the window feeders. If I want to bait up extreme range, there is no better feeder than a window feeder. They cast better, they're very aerodynamic and they literally cut through the wind. Another use for the window feeders in particular is if I want to put like a boost of worm in, sometimes on big venues, I want to try and pull some fish. So maybe I'm thinking worms are good and I'll literally just fill up bait up window with worms, put it in, put it in hard on the bottom, get it down, loads of attraction there and hopefully pull some fish down. So they're a very versatile feeder. So sometimes I'll bait up at the start with the cage as in the normal cage exchange, but then during the session to try and pin the fish to the deck, I'll use the bait up window to do that couple of little tips when it comes to baiting up. Just because you're baiting up, you don't have to release all your bait on the bottom. Just because you're using a feeder, everyone thinks, let the feeder hit, hit the bottom, then empty it. Quite often, I'll empty a couple like at mid-depth, I'll empty a couple on the surface, to try and cloud. I'm a massive believer that fish in, in big waters, they don't live on the bottom. So the, the only way I can get them into my swim is to drag them down. So I'm, let's say I'm putting eight bait ups in, I might put six on the bottom, and empty two on the surface. The idea being the two on the surface cloud. Or if it's really shallow, say I was only fishing in four foot of water, five foot, maybe six foot max, 
I might empty every single feeder on the surface. The reason I like to empty it on the surface is the cloud, but also you get a better bait spread. If you empty everything on the bottom, if I put eight feeders on the bottom, you almost end up with eight little parcels of bait on the bottom. You haven't got any sort of spread. Whereas if you empty it on the surface, you get a much better spread of bait. The only thing you've got to be careful of, obviously, if, is if it's really deep, then you don't want to be emptying it too high in the water. If it's really deep, what I, what I like to do is, first couple of casts, I let the bait up hit the bottom, but I'll count it down. So say it takes eight, if I'm counting 1,000, 2,000, for it to hit the bottom, I might empty two at a count of five. So I'm emptying them just below halfway. So I'm still getting a bit of cloud, but I'm not clouding on the surface and not quite knowing where my bait's going to end up. Another little tip is, if you are going to empty a few on the surface, be aware, that your bait can go a little bit past. When, it, when you actually come to clipping up your actual fishing rod, I'll clip it up like half a metre or one metre further than my bait and rod, just to allow, because if I mention it on the surface, it goes straight down. Whereas if I'm emptying it uh, on the bottom, the feed is dragging back on itself. So if I mention them on the surface, I just tend to take that into account by adding an extra half a metre or one metre to my fishing rod, so I know I'm fishing on top of the bait. And also, it's often not a bad thing just to fish at the back of the bait. So if I start getting a few little indications, can always stop, stop the rod slightly closer to me and fish bang on the bait. But I'd always try and take it into account if I'm emptying the bait on the surface. In summary, when it comes to baiting up, make sure you've got the right tools for the job. They make it a little bit easier. So I'm talking rod choice, obviously braid, and the right feeder. Get those three right and the rest becomes easy.